Hello, my name is Sophie and I'm one of the anaesthetists. Today we're going to talk you through the process of ultrasound guided peripheral venous cannulation. Ultrasound guidance for peripheral venous cannulation is a useful rescue technique for patients with difficult venous access. For example, patients with significant peripheral edema or who may have injected drugs in the past. In general, cannulation using traditional palpation techniques are more likely to be successful, but when these are failed, ultrasound guidance can be a useful get-out tool. The literature would suggest that ultrasound-guided cannulas have similar complication rates to traditional methods of cannulation, including infection, thrombosis, and local phlebitis. Though if your aseptic technique is poor, these are more likely to occur. As the vessels tend to lie deeper, these cannulas may be more painful and extravasation may be harder to detect. Also, as the technique is more difficult, you may be at higher risk of a needle stick injury, so take care when performing this procedure. When locating veins for ultrasound guidance, think about your anatomy. Scan where you would expect to find the veins. For example, start in the antecubital fossa and work your way down the arm looking for good cannulation sites, or work your way up looking for the cephalic or basilic veins. Although bear in mind that the cephalic vein is often the site of choice for pick line insertion, so you may wish to leave this vein intact for later use. You want to find a vein that looks relatively large and straight on the screen, not too deep down, otherwise it'll be too difficult to get into. Try to choose a vein that sits on a nice straight part of the arm, as vessels overlying elbows and wrists will probably move and kink, and make your line more likely to tissue or come out. Hand, wrists and elbows are all mobile body parts, and cannulas placed in these areas tend to have a shorter lifespan than cannulas on nice straight parts of the arm. For vascular access, you should use the high frequency linear probe as this will give you the best picture when looking for vessels. There will be a mark on one edge of the probe which corresponds to the leading edge and there's usually a dot on the screen to correspond with this. You should orientate your probe on using it to make sure you have it the right way around and usually the best way to hold it is with the leading edge towards you or the patient's head. To check your orientation, put some jelly on the tip of the probe and tap the tip of the probe with your finger you will see a corresponding movement on the ultrasound screen with the side of the probe that you're tapping. This means that your left will be the screen's left and your right will be the screen's right, which will help you when you're trying to steer your needle under the patient's skin. Keep the vessel that you intend to access in the center of the screen and use the mark in the center of the probe to help guide your needle insertion. The next thing is to make sure that you are trying to access a vein and not an artery. Arteries are round, pulsatile structures with a thick muscular wall and when you compress them with the ultrasound probe, they don't fully compress until you've put a lot of force through the probe. In contrast, veins are oval shaped, have a much thinner wall and compress very easily when you press on them with the ultrasound probe. You can also put the colour Doppler on the screen to help demonstrate flow through the vessels, but don't rely on the red or blue colour to tell you what is an artery or a vein. Red simply means that the flow is moving away from the probe and blue means that it's moving towards it. You might also be able to see things like clots, calcifications or vessel wall injury and if you see any of these things on your ultrasound, pick another site for your cannula. Technique Make sure you clean your ultrasound machine before and after use and use a protective sheath to avoid soiling of the probe. There have been reported incidents of bloodborne virus transmission as a result of contaminated ultrasound probes. Clean the skin as normal. Set up your ultrasound and orientate the probe. Get your target vessel in the middle of the screen and align it with the markings for the middle of the probe. Estimate the depth using the markings down the side of the screen. The optimal place to have your vessel is right in the middle of the screen. You can do this in a number of ways. You can adjust the depth up and down to get the vessel right into the middle. You can adjust the gain to improve the quality of the picture. But bear in mind, as you change your picture quality and depth, you might lose some peripheral structures around your vessel, which might be useful to have in sight if you are near to an artery or nerve. Consider using local anaesthetic as you're gonna use a bigger cannula and this procedure can be uncomfortable for the patients. It's worth using local anaesthetic for any cannula bigger than a pink as they can be quite uncomfortable. And if your patient looks difficult and you may need to take multiple attempts, consider using local anaesthetic to make this more tolerable for them. Your confidence with local anaesthetic will increase the more you use it. To do this, use 1% lidocaine and the smallest needle you can find. You want to introduce your needle just into the dermis to perform an interdermal injection, raise a small wheel which should blanch to confirm you're in the right place. Then you insert your cannula through your injection site. 
Keep your probe in the out of plane, short axis view and introduce your cannula into the middle of the probe, looking for the needle coming into view and tenting the vessel. You can calculate fairly accurately the angle of insertion based on your distance from the probe and the depth of the vessel in the ultrasound. For example, if you insert the needle one centimetre from the probe's centre, not the edge, and the vein is one centimetre deep on the ultrasound, then stay in the midline and advance at 45 degrees to the skin. In-plane views can be used for troubleshooting vein transection, but it makes it much more likely that you'll actually miss the vein. You have a relatively narrow field of vision, so it's easy for the needle tip to disappear off the screen. Any circular, opaque object appearing on the screen likely represents a cross-section of your needle passing under the probe. Once you get flashback into the hub, advance the cannula into the vein as normal. You will need to clean the ultrasound jelly off the skin before applying your dressing. Top tips for success. Scan all the way up and down both arms to find your best target vessel. Larger cannulas, such as green, grey or orange cannulas, are probably going to be easier to see on the ultrasound screen. Because they're also longer, they're more likely to reach the target vessel and less likely to kink once they're in the vessel itself, so your cannula will last longer if you use a bigger one. Practice looking for vessels in both the long and short axis so that you can troubleshoot when things go wrong. If you want some practical experience, consider signing up for the Aberdeen Anesthesia Ultrasound Guided Vascular Access course. There's a link in the description below.